I'm going to show you guys how to use AutoProbe. This is going to help you make nice looking dynamic objects with indirect lighting. Uh, so what I have here in this particular scene is a bunch of static meshes. They have to be marked static, otherwise you won't get any indirect light bounce. And I have a bunch of lights. I have some blue ones and I have some yellow ones. And all these lights are marked as mixed. They could also be marked as baked if you want. Um, my lighting is set up so that I have baked indirect turned on and baked global illumination for mixed lighting. Uh, that's just how I have it set up. If you have real-time global illumination turned on, you don't have to necessarily bake everything, but it's a, I, I, I think you still want to have light probes baked. I'm not really sure, but this is what's worked for me. Um, so I have all this set up. Great. I don't have a ceiling in the room, uh, but I do have a bunch of geometry, and there's actually some places down in here where you can kind of walk in, inside interior. Um, that's a that's a point light that's also marked. It's white, but it's marked as uh, mixed as well, uh, right here. So uh, inspector, it's marked as mixed. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and run because I have a uh, a little fly camera that I can kind of float around. You can see that there's a cube floating in front of me, just rotating. It helps kind of explain what's going on. You notice that the direct lighting coming from the yellow lights above are lighting the upward facing faces of the cube, but underneath it's pretty much black. You know, that's that's just typical of most games because you're getting just the direct lighting. In these cases, like I'm I'm pointing at the blue light now, ignore the, I don't know why the environment is yellow. Um, so as you run around, you can see that there's just no indirect lights. And if you go into the dark areas, it's completely pitch black, which is kind of what you expect. Over here, I have a red light, which um, the red light itself is a point light. And that point light, I don't get any indirect red bounce off of this thing. Um, shouldn't. Um, but it's an emissive cylinder. And emissive cylinders will bake into your light maps and can contribute to your indirect lighting. So that's kind of a different example. Um, all right, good. Let's turn that off. Um, yeah, and if you decide to use the, the fly camera in here, the tilde key allows you to enter and exit it um, in WASD to move around or arrow. Okay. okay, so now we want to actually create some light probes. So let's make an auto probe object. You can call it whatever you want. You can find it. Auto probe. When we create the script here, it automatically puts a light probe group, which actually holds all your light. And AutoProbe is on the same object as that. And it comes with some default settings. You can tweak them if you want. The grid size is how far apart. Well, you can make it either grid shape or not grid shape. I actually prefer it not grid shape. It's a little bit more organic. Um, but if it's grid shape, it's really fast to create the points. Uh, if it's not grid shape, it does a better job of exploring. Um, but basically, you can, you can actually do both. You can do one and then do the other. And if you want, you can manually place some grid points or, or um, light probe points, that's totally fine. It doesn't delete anything unless you click the delete button. Um, well, let's delete anyway. So as soon as you create the auto probe script, it automatically creates a constraints node. And that's just an empty holder. And then it creates a series of uh, a box, a sphere, and a capsule. And if you look, they're all here, but they're all disabled. And the way that AutoProbe works is it needs to know inside of what volume do you want to actually put your, um, your light probe because it doesn't know. And it's just going to kind of grow organically until it runs out of space. So you just want to kind of build whatever shape you want. And you can actually put as many box colliders or sphere colliders or capsules or whatever. If you prefer, you can... You can have five or 10 of them there, or you can just move them around. It doesn't care where they are. They just all need to be there so that it knows. What, um, so it's pretty flexible. All right, let's move it up to about here. That's too high. I don't, I don't have a ceiling in here, so I want to make sure that I don't go all the way up and past the ceiling because then it'll just make 
it'll make more points than I really need. I'll stop about there. That's about perfect. How about that? And then I'll adjust the Z so it's about the right size. This is the simplest case, obviously, but you know, I don't I don't have a complicated level because I'm just a programmer. Um, so there we go. And there's some there's some geometry down in here. Uh, just so you can see it. There's like stairs and all that. Um, we're hoping what happens is autoprobe should go through and instrument all the space and it should go through and figure out where it needs to put all your light probes for you. So I don't need this sphere and I don't need this capsule. So I'm just going to delete it. I don't need it. Uh, and this is disabled specifically so it won't affect the gameplay when it runs. And I'm going to generate my probes. It goes pretty quick, even though this is a really big space. This is huge. It's you know larger than a gymnasium. It's about fifty units tall and several hundred wide. So you can see there, it made quite a few points. Um, and here's here's a bug in Unity. Okay, I'll figure out one of these days how to fix it. But they don't update the pink lines that are the. Uh, it's actually creating tetrahedron. Uh, spaces between all these points kind of looks like a mess, um, but they don't update it automatically. So I have to you have to click off and then click back on it if you want to look at it. Um, okay, so let's look at our baked lighting setting. Make sure your light map parameters are set really low. Set it really low because you don't really need it to be perfect lighting. What we're trying to do is bake some kind of lighting onto the light probes. That's sort of representative, but it doesn't need to be really accurate. Um, and the reason for that is after we do a baking, we're going to then optimize the light probes. And when we optimize the light probes, we need some kind of data on the light probe. So it doesn't take very long to do this. Um, I've already actually lit the scene beforehand, um, but it only takes a couple seconds normally if it's really low. Okay, so now we have some lighting data on here. And I'm going to click Optimize Probes. And this is where the magic happens. It's going to take a few seconds to do this, but it's running through and figuring out all the unnecessary light probes that it can delete. Because it doesn't want to keep all the unnecessary ones. If you have a whole ton of light probes in your scene, it causes your dynamic objects to flicker. Um, as there's some slight variation in the math, I don't know why they flicker, but you can only have so many, uh, like you can only be in one tetrahedron at once. And if you have just thousands of tiny ones, it's going to pick different tetrahedrons every, every time that it renders and you move slightly. So you really don't want to have tons and tons of them. You want to have ones that are represented. And that means it's kind of rough lighting. But if you look at it, look at all those. It removed a ton. So again, with this bug, click off, click back on. And now it has the light probes you need. And you can see it's actually sampling really carefully the places that it thinks it needs them because the lighting changes. And the reason it's denser over here is it's smart enough to know that those are completely different lights, different lighting environment, because it's sampling the difference between this gradient here and here. That's a pretty extreme difference. It also knows that even though this point and this point are really close together, they're very different. You know, one's lit completely differently than the other. If you look inside, inside this space, it's sampling and doing a pretty good job of figuring out where it needs to put light probes all the way down into this dark hole. And I'm kind of cutting through the floor here, but you can see it's doing a pretty reasonable job of sampling that. And, you know, if you, if you think that you've done a good job and, and you like the light probes, great. You can also rerun starting from here. If you wanted to, you can click the button, tell it to, to generate more light probes, and it'll use these existing points to start with. And then you can bake the lights with higher quality. You, you could generate and optimize the probes separately. You could go and place them manually if you want to. It's not going to delete your light probes unless you click the delete button. And then it's on you. But it's undoable. All the undo stack stuff works. So anyway, there you go. Let me hit play. And we should see some nice looking um, indirect lighting going on. So you can already see a little bit of lighting coming in here because the cube isn't completely black. When you look up, it's inside this space. It's got a little bit of bounce light underneath, whereas it used to be black. Over here, 
get a decent amount of bounce light underneath. If you look under here, that wasn't there before. So there's your indirect lights. You've got bounce light. And I think over here, because there's an emissive light source, I think the emissive light source should have bounced off of there, but I'm not sure if it did. It's a little hard to see, but I think it did. Okay, so one thing we also want to do is make sure that we have nice looking lighting on the environment. And even though this isn't strictly auto probe, I thought I'd show you how to do it since there's not a whole lot of good visualization of it. Um, if you go to UV charts and you go to your static geometry, if you click on one, you should see them if they have lighting turned on. However, if they're not marked as light map static, they're not going to have it. So you have to click that on. And then there's some light map settings and whatnot in here that it should have enabled. And one, you, one of the things you need to do is basically set this up so that you control how much uh, importance it has in the light maps. And I'm not an expert here, but uh, I've managed to figure out some of it. So if you generate lighting, it generates these UV charts. And that's where it calculates a lot of the indirect lighting data. So the lights try to bake in all the indirect lighting into these light maps. And then the, the probes themselves, I believe, uses the light maps themselves in order to pick up the colors that should be in each of those light probes. So if you don't have static geometry and you haven't baked your lights, your light probes are going to be black. So you're not going to get any. So when you go back, This is mostly just indirect lighting that you're seeing inside those, those light maps. I believe if I turn these off, that indirect lighting is still baked in here. See? That's all just the glow from those lights. You can kind of see how it works, right? And that's more or less what you're you're getting when you have light probes, except that light probes are for dynamic objects. And these static light, ma light maps are being used primarily mixed into the existing shader for those wall sections and floor sections. I hope that makes sense. 